The next item of business is a statement by Derek Mackay on the provisional outturn 2016-17. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of his statement and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Derek Mackay, Cabinet Secretary. Ten minutes, please. opportunity to update Parliament on the provisional budget outturn for the 2016-17 financial year. Always a crowd puller, as you can see. Before I do so, I would like to address the outcome of the recent UK general election as it relates to public finances. It will be important for us to take time to consider the opportunities and challenges that flow from this and be ready to respond. And I will consequently urge my counterparts from the UK Government to end austerity given its impact on our economy, our public services and our communities. There will inevitably be budget implications for us to manage in future years from a new UK Government and not least the £3.5 billion worth of cuts previously announced. I will now turn to the provisional outturn for 2016-17. Financial year 2016-17 represented the first year of the 2015 UK Spending Review Settlement that saw the Scottish Government's discretionary budget continue to fall in real terms. It also represented the first year in which the Scottish Parliament became responsible for setting income tax rates and bans alongside the setting of rates for landfill tax and land and building transaction tax. The prudent and principles-based approach that my predecessor took to taxation is one that I plan to replicate over the course of this session of Parliament. Under the current devolution settlement, the Scottish Parliament is not permitted to overspend its budget. As a consequence, we have consistently adopted a position of controlling public expenditure to ensure that we live within the budget caps that apply, but remain able to manage a limited carry forward of some resources for a future year. That prudent strategy has proven to be the right one. Back in February, I outlined an additional funding package to be made available in 2017-18 that was subsequently approved by Parliament. At that time, I set out how this package was to be funded, including the use of an additional budget exchange. I've also made clear that as we reach the end of the financial year, the precise figures will become more certain. I can report to Parliament today that the commitments I made in February have been fully funded and I can report that within our discretionary budget, the fiscal departmental expenditure limit, fiscal DEL, the provisional outturn for 2016-17 is expenditure of £29.7 billion against a limit of £29.9 billion. And this represents a carry forward of £191 million into 2017-18. In total, there's a fiscal Dell cash carryover of £98 million in resource spending and £40 million in capital spending. And there's also a provisional outturn carryover of £53 million in respect of financial transactions that, through rules set by HM Treasury, are ring-fenced for loans and equity investment outside the public sector. Overall, including financial transactions, that means we will be carrying forward 0.6% of the total 2016-17 cash budget. These cash sums are carried forward in full using HM Treasury's budget exchange facility, ensuring no loss of spending power in Scotland. And the Scottish Government has once again demonstrated a sound grip on the public finances. Turning to the non-discretionary elements of our budget, the non-cash deal provision, which I remind Parliament again, are ring fences for a very narrow range of purposes and cannot be used to purchase goods or deliver public services. Based on the provisional outturn position, expenditure is lower than budget by £108 million, which is consistent with previous years. And as the description suggests, these resources are not cash in nature. Rather, they provide very specific budget cover for differences between estimated accounting adjustments and the final amounts calculated. And the budget includes the depreciation and impairment of assets, which have no cash consequences. Finally, I turn to devolved taxes. And I'm pleased to inform Parliament that our tax take is up. A total of £633 million has been collected in 2016-17, which represents £61 million more income than was delivered in the previous financial year. That's 2015-16, a rise of 10%, slightly lower by £38 million than original estimates in December 2015 suggested. The devolved taxes figure, alongside other figures reported today, are provisional and as such are subject to the final audit process. 
Revenue Scotland will confirm final figures when publishing its accounts and the devolved taxes accounts in September. You may recall that I announced £74 million of surplus tax receipts from 2015-16 at this time last year and that I had decided to take a prudent view on the deployment of these resources, recognising the impact that decisions out with my direct control can have on property transactions and the need to manage potential volatility in future tax revenues. Since then, we have seen increased volatility brought about by Brexit and recent actions of the Westminster Government. The £74 million will therefore remain held in reserve, available for deployment in the future to address any shortfalls in tax receipts. On income tax, in accordance with our agreement with HM Treasury, this has been funded in full, in line with the forecast. And this represents a transitional arrangement as we move to the full devolution of income tax from 2017-18. This statement of 2016-17 provisional outturn reflects the position against HM Treasury budgetary controls and will be followed by reporting on the final outturn against the 2016-17 Budget Act limits in a suite of annual accounts which together report on the total Scottish budget approved by the Scottish Parliament. The annual accounts of the Scottish Government and the individual bodies funded from the Scottish Budget will report on their expenditure compared to the allocation by the Budget Act. The annual Scottish Government consolidated accounts and a statement of total outturn for the financial year 2016-17 against the final budget for the Scottish Administration as a whole will be provided to the Scottish Parliament later this year. And as we work through a period of considerable sustained uncertainty for both individuals and businesses, it is incumbent on the Government and Parliament to demonstrate strong leadership in managing the public finances. The continuing competence that this Government has taken to the management of public finances has once again been demonstrated in our management of the 2016-17 budget. Our prudent approach has served as well, and I therefore commend today's figures to Parliament. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in his statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question would, que would press the request to speak buttons. Now, and I call first Murdo Fraser. Mr Fraser, please. Uh, thank you, the Deputy uh, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for his statement and for uh, advance sight of it. The Cabinet Secretary, in his statement, once again claimed that the Scottish Government's discretionary spending power, fiscal Dell, had been cut. But this contrasts with the view of the highly respected and independent Fraser of Allender Institute, whose own analysis shows the total Scottish Government budget being higher now than it has ever been in the past. And in relation to fiscal Dell, there has been no real terms cut in that aspect since the SNP came to power in 2007. In relation to the detail of the statement today, I have two specific questions for the Cabinet Secretary. Firstly, in his final budget for the current financial year, in what was an unprecedented move, the Cabinet Secretary included a figure of £125 million in spending drawn from underspends in the last financial year. Can you therefore confirm today that the total underspend he's announcing in cash of £98 million in resource and £40 million in capital includes this figure of £125 million already announced and already committed? And if that is the case, does this not mean there's much less new spending Av money available to spend uh, at this stage than there was in previous years. Secondly, the figure for devolved taxes collected at £633 million is some £38 million pound below estimates. How much of this total comes from the shortfall in lands and buildings transaction tax? And is it not now time for the Cabinet Secretary to start listening to all the voices who have been telling him for years that LBTT rates on domestic properties are set too high at the upper bands and he would actually raise more money and help stimulate our flagging economy if he were prepared to take action and lower them. Cabinet Secretary. I, I suppose in response to Mr Fraser, we've had a, a number of disagreements about fiscal Dell and about UK government support. I can also cite the Fraser of Allender uh, Institute and I think that's just a debate that we are repeatedly going to have. But I would again uh, make the plea to UK government that they should change course uh, on their fiscal policy, something that the Chancellor suggested he would do, but already seems to have U-turned uh, on, on that position over the course of a matter of hours, something that seems quite popular in the Tory party at the moment on, on U-turning uh, the position. 
In terms of the budget exchange that I identified over the course uh, of uh, I have announced uh, today does uh, reiterate the budget exchange position that I outlined over the course of the previous budget negotiations and work through Parliament. So the figures are as stated and build upon the figures that I gave uh, to Parliament uh, previously, recognising these of course are provisional uh, figures. In terms of the question around devolved uh, taxes, now subject to some final confirmation from uh, uh, Revenue Scotland that I'm sure Mr uh, Fraser uh, would understand. And on the subject of, of U-turn, I'm, I'm interested that uh, the Tories appear to be demanding that I collect even more tax from the taxpayers uh, of Scotland. You want me to collect even more tax, uh, having, increased, having uh, increased the tax take uh, that the Parliament uh, uh, and the Government ha has done through uh, our policies. Uh, in terms of attacking the, uh, criticising the uh, methodology. I mean, this is a, it's not a precise exercise in terms of, of forecasts, but we've actually been in, within, I think, a very accurate range. If I can give the figures, uh, therefore, as I say, we've generated more in, in terms uh, of uh, taxation. So we uh, were able to uh, have £484 million in 2016-17. That is, of course, uh, an increase. Uh, in terms of what we had in from Scottish landfill tax, uh, that was uh, an outturn of £149 million. Pounds. Now, in terms of the modelling, um, we, if you look at both years together, the aggregate uh, forecast uh, over two years, uh, the forecast over two years was £919 million, pounds, and the actual outturn is £909 million. Pounds. So that's a variance of 1%. Now, recognising that the equivalent tax in the UK, SDLT, their variance actually over the two-year aggregate was some to cast in the assessments we've made as the Scottish Government were uh, very uh, reasonable indeed. And to the point about market share and the, the upper end of the market and land building transaction tax, I would point out uh, that market share has been fairly consistent. And when I've looked at the evidence here, I've come to the conclusion that there isn't such that behavioural uh, effect that Murdo Fraser has suggested that it is. But I will continue to uh, monitor uh, this issue. And of course, we'll look at the uh, Scottish uh, Fiscal Commission uh, forecasts as they take up this issue in their statutory functions. Kezia Dugdale. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of this afternoon's statement and I share his desire to see the UK Tory government abandon its austerity project knowing the damage it's done to our communities, our public services and our economy. What a shame therefore that we spent the last year watching this Cabinet Secretary take that Tory austerity and pass it on to communities across the country. The outturn statement shows an £85 million underspend in the community's portfolio, whereas government has the capacity to alleviate that austerity, and a £76 million underspend in education and skills, which we are led to believe is the government's top priority. Can you therefore explain to families struggling to make ends meet, watching their kids be taught by volunteers in our schools, why they are missing out on this much-needed help now? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what the, the Labour Party proposed to do that the Scottish Government didn't support was passing on austerity to individuals by way of a basic rate tax increase, and that's not a position that we supported. But in relation to two very specific questions that have been uh, raised uh, around the uh, budget exchange uh, and the variance, I want to make absolutely clear, first of all, in the community's budget, the impression that was given around support uh, for vulnerable uh, communities and our social security position it is not one reflected by the facts, and I, and I think it is helpful when I'm, able, when I'm able to give detail on why there is variance. That is specifically around not necessarily the social justice and regeneration uh, area, but more around the housing uh, lines. And within that, it's not there's a lack of resource being spent on housing. There is. We're meeting our housing targets in terms of uh, more uh, house uh, building. But it's in very specific areas, sometimes in demand-led areas, whether that's area-based schemes on heaps, uh, home energy efficiency applications, and of course we want to encourage that, or help for homes, equity loan schemes uh, as well, uh, or in other loan schemes where it's been made available, but in some occasions we've been struggling to attract uh, applicants. So of course we want to do more around that, as well as, for example, the Regeneration Capital Grant, where we've made resources available, but sometimes, for example, local authorities uh, may not be able to identify the underspend until later on in the financial year. My point is these resources aren't lost, but can be carried forward. But that's certainly not 
uh, a case of a lack of willing to spend to support our most vulnerable uh, communities. I say it's very specific lines within the housing brief uh, rather than social security or social justice or uh, regeneration. But of course, we want to encourage the uptake of the on, uh, education. And again, looking closely uh, at uh, the variance, it is, it is a fraction of the overall spend on education, of course, uh, over £2 billion spent uh, on education. On the individual uh, budget lines, again, some of this is demand-led. So if these, but if people don't apply, if you don't come forward for that support, then sp actual spend, actual outcome will be less. And there's other areas, such as in the, the attainment funds, the various attainment funds we have that are multi-year spend. We've made a commitment around three quarters of a billion pound. And that will be spent over the three-year period, over the, the course uh, of, the, of the parliamentary uh, period, I should say, as set out in the programme for government will achieve that. But some of those schemes have taken time to establish and then deliver an outturn. But we are absolutely committed uh, to spending uh, those uh, resources. And I've touched upon other demand-led budgets, such as those within Skills Development Scotland as well, where the resources made available, but is based on those willing to come forward to secure uh, that funding. And that's examples of uh, some of the variance. Uh, whilst we, we of course uh, fund the education system in Scotland uh, as a priority and that is why we made it a priority in the budget to spend £120 million pounds, uh, allocated to uh, the, 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 the pupil uh, equity fund uh, through the Scottish uh, uh, attainment fund. So there are a range of actions that we are taking to support education. Now I have 10 members wanting to ask questions. I say the usual thing, no preambles. Questions please. And Cabinet Secretary, it would be very helpful if you could have succinct answers and together we might all get through 10 questions. I call Stuart McMillan who is going to set an example followed by Liam Kerr. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary spoke in the statement about the volatility they brought about I said by, set an example. Brexit. That means you start with a question. Yeah. Yeah. And just uh, regarding the, this volatility, what measures uh, will the Scottish Government actually take uh, to support economic growth and also help Scotland to weather the economic shocks caused by Brexit and failing Tory policies? Cabinet Secretary. Well, we'll take a range of actions around our taxation policy, our leadership, our interventions with UK government, securing the best possible outcome for Scotland in relation to the Brexit negotiations. And there are funds that have been announced, such as the um, Scottish uh, Growth Scheme, and uh, continue to support agencies such as Scottish Enterprise to support Scottish business. Thank you. Liam Kerr, followed by Jackie Bailey. Thank you. In relation to the shortfall in LBTT rates, what is the split of the £38 million loss between residential and commercial sales? And the Cabinet Secretary has already downgraded the amount uh, raised by LBTT once. Does he accept that he will be forced to do it again? Cabinet Secretary. I, I don't have the figures to hand on the split between uh, commercial and residential, but of course Revenue Scotland uh, will uh, report on that. I think that's later uh, this week. I have explained that we've increased the tax take and I've also explained here and previously that when looking at the methodology and the forecasting, it's not an exact science, but you have to take into account the economic conditions at the time. And we've done that in the budget process so that we can reflect on those forecasts and make sure that we've got an accurate forecast going forward. And that's certainly been a, a robust process. And I've already given the, uh, the variance, which I think compares very favourably to the UK government, the OBR's figures. And this, of course, will be a matter for the SFC going forward. Jackie Bailey, followed by Patrick Hardy. Will the Finance Secretary confirm yes or no what he failed to clearly do to Murdo Fraser, that the £125 million used in the budget is actually contained within the £191 million underspend today? And given that it is a one-off, not recurring funding, does that mean that before the Finance Secretary does anything else, he needs to find the £125 million to plug the gap for next year simply to stand still? Cabinet Secretary. I, I've said that the figures that I've announced today are upon the, the, the discussions I had around the budget. And I've also pointed out previously that these uh, figures of budget exchange are not recurring. And that's why we, we, we were fully transparent about this in setting the budget for 1718. Uh, so that shouldn't come as a surprise to the Chamber. Patrick Harvey, followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you. I'm grateful for the advance copy of the statement. Isn't it clear from taking the statement together with the research published by SPICE yesterday on local government finance 
that while green pressure successfully resulted in a 1.5% increase in local government funding in the current financial year, it is not enough to make up for the cuts which came before. Is that not a priority going forward to go from fl flat line or small increases to reversing the historic cuts to local government funding? Cabinet Secretary. I suspect the debate is moving from provisional outturn into wider budget negotiations and wider budget um, positioning. I do believe that the budget settlement for local government was a strong and it was a, a fair settlement and also gave local authorities the ability to raise taxation uh, locally as well. So I continue to, to have the opinion it was a strong and fair settlement for local government as evidenced by many of the budget decisions that local authorities were able to take earlier this year. Willie Rennie, followed by Marie Todd. Uh, does the Finance Secretary understand that people will be surprised by his two-faced approach on this? He described a £67 million cut to his budget as unnecessary and damaging austerity. Yet when he himself cut it by another £191 million, he calls it a sound grip on the public finances. How can £67 million be damaging, yet £191 million be sound? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I've explained that, taken into context, the carry forward uh, is reasonable. I think it, putting it into context in terms of the UK government or the Welsh government, it's actually less than a percentage uh, of a carry forward that either the UK government has or the Welsh government uh, has. So I, I think it is sound financial management. We'll never get the precise figure exactly on the budget cap, but what we uh, fail to spend in one year is carried forward to the next and no resources lost to Scotland. And that wasn't always the case uh, by uh, governments in this parliament, uh, but it is the case of this SNP government that we don't lose a single penny and it's carried forward into the next year. Marie Todd, followed by Dean Lockhart. Thank you. For the sake of context, can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what the current percentage underspend is under the Labour government in Wales and the Tories in England? <laughs> what, what well, a timely... well, I have let it be a wide-ranging debate, so... What a timely question, Presiding <laughs> Officer. What a timely question. Our, 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 our figure represents 0.6% uh, in Wales, Labour-led of course the figure is 0.9% and for the UK led by the Tories the figure is 0.7%. Dean Lockhart followed by John Mason. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. There has been an underspend of 76 million in education and skills. Can I ask the Finance Secretary if the significant cuts in college places, as highlighted this week by Audit Scotland, is another reason for the underspend in the area of education and skills? Cabinet Secretary. No. John Mason, followed by James Kelly. Thank you. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm that he is not allowed to overspend and therefore he is effectively required to underspend and that many businesses, charities and other organisations would be delighted if they could come within 0.6% of their budget? Cabinet Secretary. The point around the ability to overspend is correct. Well, I was asking for short answers. This is getting better. James Kelly followed by Ivan McKee. Uh, since the Cabinet Secretary likes to be precise about figures, can I ask... How much was the underspend in the housing budget? And does he agree that such an underspend is unacceptable when we have people, homeless people, sleeping rough on our streets? Cabinet Secretary. I, I was trying to be helpful earlier on to Kezia Dugdale when I was able to express in the overall portfolio of uh, communities, social security and uh, equality. Just a wee minute. I can't hear because there's a couple of members having a wee to do with each other. I won't name them, but I think they know who they are. Sorry, Cabinet Secretary, continue. Yes, Presiding Officer, I was just saying that I was trying to be helpful in addressing the variance in that particular portfolio around community social security and equalities uh, where housing uh, rests. Uh, that there was uh, not an issue around how we're supporting our, our vulnerable communities. I was identifying some of the very specific uh, housing funds, particularly around heaps where there was an issue about take-up of some of the, the schemes. So it's not the case, uh, as uh, James Kelly uh, has been suggesting, that there's a substantial underspend in uh, homelessness or, or any of those areas. So I hope I can uh, allay your concerns uh, that is the case, uh, that the variance that has been identified is in other areas. Ivan McKee. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, would the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that a carry forward of only 0.6% represents prudent financial management of the country's finances? 
Cabinet Secretary. Yes, I am tempted to agree with that <laughs> statement. And it sounds as if the entire chamber agrees with that statement. And, <laughs> and if I can just make one quote, the Auditor General's report has pointed out in the past that the government has effective management and the Scottish Government has a good record of financial management. So I agree with the Auditor General as well. Thank you very much. That concludes questions to the Cabinet Secretary and everyone got a question. So I thank you all for your efforts. Before we move on to the next time of business, I'll uh, suspend for a couple of minutes, let front benches take their places. Thank you.